everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays Abiding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Afterbirth Plus. The so Merriam-Webster's Dictionary defines plus as something that is a mathematical operation uh, applying two or more variables to, okay, SD8AA1V1. It's Onan Streak. Do you remember Onan Streak? The 21st night of September. Mm, can't sing this song in October. Oh, the curse of earth, wind, and fire. I, can I shoot this? Yes. Onan Streak. If you miss a shot, you take half a heart of damage. If you take two half hearts of damage to begin with, you will die. I am immediately over the moon with the way this run looks. Look. So, the I rule challenge, that being a loss, whatever. You know, we know we're going to win the next time we do it. It's the easiest challenge in the world. All we have to do is remember one thing. Who would have thought, you know, being half decent in Isaac, beating some of these challenges that are tough just on merit and skill? Easy task. Remembering one simple path. The most difficult task the world could ever face. But I am disappointed we lost the Brains Challenge. I really thought we had a great chance at that. But we could redeem ourselves. Onan Streak is, uh, you know, it's considered one of the hardest challenges in the game. Now, to get Rotten Baby immediately and essentially just short-circuit the parameters of the challenge. Uh, what do we call that in this business? A dream come true. <laughs> we call that a lucky day. We call that a merciful outcome. Just don't call it late for supper. Hmm, Spirit Heart, I like it. All we need now, I mean, we have 8.71 damage, which is disgustingly good. All we need, sincerely, is uh, HP. Go ahead, go ahead. If we're able to stack up a bunch of HP, we will not lose this run. Our stats are already too good. Rotten Baby means we don't even have to shoot enemies. If we're ever worried about enemies... Uh, you know, there, there is one unique kind of negative to this run, and that is if I shoot at the same time Rotten Baby lands a fly, I could end up missing an occasional shot. I would be very surprised if that doesn't happen, you know, one or more times over the course of this run, but apart from that, it's a small price to pay for having access to, like, a really, really, really good uh, DPS augmenter here. Hmm, that's a reroll. Just don't shoot accidentally here. We will, you know, as of present, even have Deal with the Devil access, which is kind of surprising. Yo, Eden's Blessing. I don't think it'll do anything for us on the next run. But an immediate, like, one-quarter improvement to our, uh, to our rate of fire is nice. Basically just minimizes the charge time for chocolate milk. Do you say quarter or quarter? That was my bad. I've been trying to, you know, the NLSS meta of he said the word wrong has gone too far. I stopped calling it pasta, because every time I try, you don't know how frustrating it is, all right? Well, I mean, you probably do if you're not from the United States of America and you've ever talked to somebody who is from there. But anyway, apart from that, um, you know, I try to give a, a little anecdote. I got a punchline in mind, this rhyme I designed to explain in due time, all I know. Thank you for the bone heart. That's actually extraordinarily valuable. I do not want the shovel to go along with it. Give me deals with the angel, please. Unfortunately, the anecdote intersects in no uncertain terms with a, a word that I pronounce incorrectly, uh, depending on your predilections for how it should be pronounced in the first place. That word is pasta or pasta. So I've just started calling them Italian noodles. I thought that would be a, a way for people to focus on the content of my speech instead of the way that I said it, you know? I'm not trying to say that I'm some kind of revolutionary in that regard, but, you know, I am pretty enlightened. And all of a sudden, everyone stops me and goes, wait, what? What are Italian noodles? And I go, come on, you know, just don't make me say it. I mean, <laughs> come on, Chewbacca, you know. Anyway, where am I going with this? I don't know. It's the first video of the day. It's also likely the last video of the day because I'm streaming a lot. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of pressure to get some commentary out there right off the bat, but you know what there's not a lot of pressure for is to succeed on this run whatsoever. We have four and a half hearts. I, I do wish that we could have a few <clears throat> less big rooms. 
feel like we're getting a little bit overkill on the large rooms here. I like a room where I can go into the center. There's six enemies. One, two, three, four, five. They're all dead. Who killed the sixth enemy? They opted out once they saw the damage that I was outputting. I would be remiss, by the way, I forgot to mention earlier this week. I mean, we're probably uh, two or three days past Monday now, but happy Canadian thanks. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving to all of my Canadian viewers and those who choose to identify as Canadian in order to celebrate an extra day off. I'm very rarely am I perturbed about an extra day off. I feel like I've probably answered this question every year, and the... I thought that I could hit you. The answer to the question is, uh, genuinely that I do not know, but I'll try to go through it anyway, okay? What is Canadian Thanksgiving? Uh, it's, it's our Thanksgiving. It's the day that we give thanks. What is it celebrating? Well, it's celebrating... It's like a build-your-own holiday, right? You know, if you're thankful for... Your family, you go up to your mom and dad and you say, hey, thank you. Be thankful for, you know, mint flavored Oreos. You go to the Nabisco Corporation and you say, thank you for the mint flavored Oreos. They've really added a lot of spice no, to my uh, cookie eating habits, you know? We don't have a, a I don't want to call it a myth because I'm not familiar enough with the context of American Thanksgiving. But as I understand it, uh, Pilgrims, Plymouth Rock, they landed and the natives were like, Oh sweet, finally some company, and they all had a delicious feast and got along wonderfully, and then, you know, they still do to this day. I don't know if that event actually happened or if it was just a nice way to sell it to people, but... Yeah, we, I mean, what's weirder, okay? Be honest about this. Having a day in which you give thanks for things that are in your life at the present moment, excuse me, that coin is on top of a rock, or celebrating the anniversary of a feast that your great-grandparents took part in. <laughs> I think, I think having a day in which you look at your life and take stock of the positives in it and say, hey, thank you, because I know that, you know, you put a lot of work into doing that. That's worth something instead. I'm only bringing this up, I'm only getting defensive because there's some offense involved as well whenever Americans talk about Canadian Thanksgiving. I mean, you can just look at the replies to my tweet, you know? I said, Happy Canadian Thanksgiving, and then a bunch of people replied, Happy Fake Thanksgiving. You know, it's a little insulting. Imagine if, uh, he's not quite on the same level, but imagine if, uh, you know, you had a friend who was Jewish, and they said, Happy Hanukkah, and you said, Happy Fake Christmas. I mean, that's basically what you're saying to me. And, you know, because I have a sense of humor, I found it hilarious. But, you know, you gotta be careful with who you do that to, because you're gonna get yourself in a lot of trouble. That's one where you gotta read the room, and you gotta know your audience in advance. Hmm. I don't really want that. I also don't really want to lose my bone heart, because things are getting a little... Dangerous? You know what? I will take a grandfather fly. It's one of those unique situations where I think it's, uh... Sort of acceptable to give it a shot. And I'm kind of just letting... Rotten Baby get all the kills right now. I think it might work out okay that way. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm not trying to say our Thanksgiving is better or worse. I think they both have their positives and negatives. I've talked about them you know, probably at this point, ad nauseum, as you would likely admit. What is the benefit of Canadian Thanksgiving? I like a holiday in early October, because I already have my birthday in November, and not everybody does, but, you know, roughly 8% of the population probably has their birthday in November, repeating, of course. It's nice to have a holiday in October. Halloween does not count. You don't get the day off from work for Halloween. You know why? Because the government recognizes that it's a meme holiday. If you like Halloween, that's fine. Really? I thought I could get to that for sure. But I mean, it's not on the same level as a Thanksgiving, you know, Christmas, Easter, Canada Day, slash Independence Day, slash July 4th. Sorry, not July 4th. 4th of July is what I meant to say. We will take the nail here. 
We actually have done ourselves a great disservice. By getting... Well, there's positives and negatives, obviously. By getting Rotten Baby and Little Brimstone, we're actually running the risk that it's actually harder to land a shot than it previously was. Because enemies will often die before my tier can reach them. Mind you, we still got like a ton of killing power, but anyway. What's the benefit to American Thanksgiving? Um, hey, get out of here. I can't see well. Well, I mean, it, it it's kind of nice to have a signifier to the start of the winter holiday season. I can understand the value in that. Um, you might say football, but I mean, you can watch football in October. You know, it's still on. It's just not quite as close to when, you know, the games appear to be more meaningful. I That's painful. Games appear to be more meaningful, I suppose. You know what does annoy me, though? Is that, you know... If you want to make fun of Canadian Thanksgiving, that's fine. But y'all celebrate Columbus Day on the same day as Canadian Thanksgiving. Seems a little like it's like having your cake and eating it too, wouldn't you say? Is this a double tinted rock? No, just a regular. It's like if I was like, you know, hey, we celebrate Canada Day on a different day than July 4th, which we do. It's July 1st, don't you forget it. But then on July 4th, we were like, unrelated, today is... <clears throat> Frog in my throat. Trying to stop me before I say something ignorant. He's gonna say, you know, it, on July 1st, we celebrate Canada Day. On July 4th, we celebrate uh, Jean Chrétien Day. Totally independent of the... It's not like we're jealous of your holiday or anything. We just have our own totally independent holiday that's really cool. And you wouldn't understand it unless you were alive during the reign of the... 17th Prime Minister of Canada, Jean Chrétien, from the year 1992 to 2000. Anyway, happy Canadian Thanksgiving. I also think Canadian Thanksgiving is a good holiday. You know, holidays change as you age, but Canadian Thanksgiving is a really good holiday for people that are in their first year of college or university and they're not in their parents' house anymore. Because you, you go to school in September, you know, the first week of September, or the last week of August, depending on where you live, I suppose. And then, you know, maybe it's your first time living away from home. You're like, ma, I don't know how to do the laundry. And she's like, hey, dummy, Google exists, okay? You don't need me anymore. I've been phased out. Just Google, best way to do laundry. You'll figure it out. Teach a man to fish. But you don't have, you know, it seems like a big deal. And I remember, because, you know, I was in that position... What is it? It's the year 2018. I was in that position 12 years ago myself. Everything in my life had been done for me. And then I go to college and they're like, Hey, well, you got to do like two chores for yourself now. <laughs> and you're like, oh, man, being an adult stinks. I got to do my own laundry. Yeah, my food's still prepared for me and stuff like that. But hey, you get the idea. You know, they ease you into adult life because there's a lot of things to learn. And it's daunting at first. You go, oh, my God. I'm never going to figure out all of these things like forcing myself to go to bed at a reasonable hour. Well, I shouldn't make fun of that because we're still, you know, streaming culture still <laughs> leaves that a little up in the air. But, uh, you know, when you have Canadian Thanksgiving, what it means is that your parents go like, ah, don't cry. It's okay. All you have to do is make it to like the second or first week of October and then... Uh, you know, then you can come home. So all you gotta do is think of it at first as like a five or six week summer camp. And then you come home for Thanksgiving. And then what happens after that? Well, you make it another uh, six weeks, you come home for the Christmas holidays. What happens after that? Then you gotta do the long stretch. Well, I mean, you could come home for spring break slash reading week, but you know, you, you might make it to the summer at that point in which you come home and get a job at like a golf course or something like that for the summer. Look, I know you're like, how does he know my life? It's because I've been there, okay? So it eases you into adult life. And then by, you know, second or third year, you're like, sorry, I'm not going home for Thanksgiving. I'm not going home for reading week. I'm not coming home for the summer vacation. I got to forge my own life here in the college town that I'll abandon once I graduate. So I see the value there. I mean, it's ridiculous. What if you go to, you're going to New York University. You're from Southern California. You're going to fly from... New York to LA 
for Thanksgiving in the third week in November. They're gonna fly back for Christmas right after that. It's ridiculous. It's like... It's like the Pilgrims didn't consult with the American academic scholastic calendar when they decided when to put their holiday. Anyway, the point is, we rule, you drool, get owned, lull, forehead. Um, Onan Street could not be going better right now. Basically, everything we've ever wanted on this run is here in my arms. We're at full HP. Are we on? Yeah, we're on Dank Devs 2 already. We got two out of three Guppy items with a great deal with the Devil Chance here. Nine lives in case things start to go terribly wrong. Like, genuinely. We also have the Cancer item for when we get, like, further down here. Might become relevant. This is, like, the strongest Onan streak run I could ever imagine. This is great penance for that awful Brains run. Anyway. You get the idea. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving. What did I do for Thanksgiving? Kate and I had a really nice Thanksgiving meal at a at a posh Vancouver restaurant that served like... I have to admit, I expected that when the meal came out, it was going to be like a little thin slice of turkey. And then, oh, it's got a gravy reduction on top. But it was actually like a nice home-styled, traditional turkey dinner. I liked it a lot. I will say, if it, it illuminates the way that we spent our long weekend. I already told you about what I did on my day off, which was nice. But, you know, when we ordered, the server was like, how many turkey dinners is that for you now? And I said, it's one. And then she said, oh, well, I'm sure you guys were busy. And I was like, well, you know what? <laughs> You're right. But I don't know why it seems like there's judgment in that voice. Maybe there was. Maybe there was. I mean, it was... Was a nice person in her in her service of us, but simultaneously, I was like, I had to run it through my head. I was like, how many turkey dinners is normal for Thanksgiving? Even when I was at home for Thanksgiving, it was one. I get it though. Okay, so like, I guess you go through phases in your life where you add or subtract turkey dinners for for a Thanksgiving or a, a Christmas, right? Don't take this the wrong way, but you know, if your parents are together. You're probably getting one turkey dinner, maybe two, like one with your family and then one with your extended family. At least that would be the way that it would work for me. I guess if, you're, if your parents had split up or separated over the course of, uh, you know, your, your life, you would get two right there. And then, uh, you know, if you get a serious relationship, that would be like another one for sure. Like you would have... You know, Thanksgiving with your family, and then Thanksgiving with your significant other's family. Are you a significant other? Your first serious girlfriend or boyfriend? What, your partner? I don't know. His partner is like... Seems like there's been like a contract signed at that point. Your boo? Do people say that anymore? Probably not. I never said it in the first place. Except when doing karaoke about Alicia Keys and Nelly. Um, Usher? Usher. My mistake. In my defense, though, Usher and Nelly, I really feel like Nelly minus Bandage. You're kind of looking at Usher there. Which Usher? I'm d Usher Raymond, maybe you've heard of him? Now, that would be, a, that would be like a Millie Vanilli level story. It turned out that... Usher put, it was like a Clark Kent Superman thing, like when Usher puts on the bandage, nobody recognizes him anymore. Quick, it's getting hot in here and we don't know what to do with our clothes. I'll handle this. <laughs> hot and so hot in here. Cut me some slack, okay? I was like 14 when that song came out. Um, But I, I mean, I found it a question with some judgment, you know? Not judgment, but... It did it made me question my own values. How many Thanksgiving dinners is normal? How many turkey dinners is normal? I still think it's one. You get one... Maybe you go, like, uh... You know, over a long weekend, you're... Here's what I look forward to out of Thanksgiving, is, like... I know, like, if it's a long weekend, and I'm, like, 16 years old... Friday night, it's pizza night. No question. Anytime it's a long weekend, 
and your parents get three days off from work instead of the requisite two the unions fought for back in the early 20th century, you know you're getting some dominoes, some godfathers, some two for one, etc., etc. Because you're like, ah, we can get. It's a holiday. Calories don't count on a holiday. Everybody knows that. I want to make the most of my leisure time, so we're getting pizza tonight. <laughs> Shouldn't have stood there. Still, though. One turkey dinner. That's enough. And we, Kate and I were talking about it. And we were like, have we ever done anything for Thanksgiving before? I don't believe the answer to that question is yes. Thanksgiving, I kind of see it without being unnecessarily rude. In Canada, in America, it definitely seems like Thanksgiving is more of a... It's like part of the big three, right? It's like Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving. Those are the big three holidays. Is that July 4th, maybe? In Canada, it's it's definitely top ten. Like, it's a Im relatively important holiday. But it's also like, it lands on a Monday. It's kind of like, it's one you can opt out of. It's one of the easiest holidays to just be like, you know... I'm a little busy. Maybe we'll just take a... We'll do an informal Thanksgiving ourselves a little later. I'm glad we did something for it, but... You know, I, last year we did... You know, I, I think almost every culture on Earth has their own version of Thanksgiving, so... You know, Kate's family is Korean, obviously, and they, they celebrate what we call Korean Thanksgiving, and they call uh, Chuseok. I don't know why we have to... It's like, the, there's a weird thing in, like, it's not just in Korean culture, I'm sure, but, like, so many things in Korean culture get compared to something in, like, Western culture. It's like, whenever people d try to describe kimbap, which is, like, a seaweed, rice, and, you know, meat or vegetable roll. It's a lot like sushi, but with no fish. I've heard people go, like, it's kind of like, a, it's like a Korean sandwich. And I'm like, no, it's not at all. It's cylindrical. You give me a cylindrical sandwich, I'm taking it back to Subway. Vaguely cylindrical, maybe, but yeah, it's just, it's their own holiday. You know, we call it Eid. We call it Diwali. I don't, you know, but then when it's, uh, <laughs> you know, Solnal, we have to go, it's Chinese New Year, sort of. Anyway, you get the idea. And dude, I will take a turkey dinner over Korean Thanksgiving any day of the week. I understand the cultural significance, but like, I gotta say, Thanksgiving is a holiday about eating, and that's more my speed. For Chuseok, when I went to her parents' house, we were singing hymns and like, bowing to pictures of her parents' parents, and I'm like, Do I understand, by the way, spiritually, so significant. Okay, it's Kidney Stone. Fantastic. I was wondering why I was enjoying the game 2% more than usual. It hadn't been unlocked yet. <clears throat> I understand the cultural significance, but as an outsider, I was like, I don't know how any hymns go. Is this swing low, sweet chariot? Also, I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's a young man thing, but bowing makes me feel weird. I'm like, I'm no one's ever going to make me bow. <laughs> I will never bow to you. I'm my own man. I don't genuflect or show reverence. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode and happy Canadian Thanksgiving. If you did, click the like button. I'm radio. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Of course, follow me on Twitch. Be notified when I go live in the future. Twitch.tv slash online. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya!